welcome back to my channel today we're going to do more work on this guy and we're going to try and get as much of this black fur done if not all of it we're going to try we'll see how far we get we're very close to him being finished now so i would like to get quite a bit of him done today so we're going to focus on getting this transition between the ear done and then bring the black fur down and then yeah we'll just see how far we get hopefully we'll get it done and then the last part will just be the rest of the white collar so i'm gonna take my warm gray one as usual and we're gonna add a base layer all along the top of this head now so we're making sure that we're capturing this curve of the fur so it's curving down here and it's sort of curving into this ear Again, fairly hard pressure, we want to smooth out that tooth for the paper. I've got a sharp pencil as well, so with the base layers I try and use a sharper pencil just to help with the smoothing of the tooth. Okay, so I've covered in this section now. I'm going to get my dark indigo. And I'm really going to start focusing on this fur. So if we bring this over here. I'm really, I'm really looking sort of at all the shapes again that I can see and then I can gauge by the shapes, the way that the shapes are falling, the shape of the, the shapes are sort of forming different, in different directions, um, which is then helping me gauge this third direction. Sorry, that took some explaining. <laughs> I hope that made sense. So by looking at the direction that the shapes are going, you'll get the direction of the fur. There we go. Just bring that down here. Okay, um, I'm then going to take the cold grey six, and what I'm going to do with cold grey six is I'm going to map in some of the shadows that I can see. Um, which are creating these clumps of fur and that again is just points of references for me but just before I go in to any of the other colours mainly the Payne's grey and the black so I may go over with black with these like shapes that we're going to create but we'll see, we'll see if it's needed, it might not be needed These will blend out nicely as we start adding all the other colours. So fairly medium pressure, not too hard, but enough to see it. So just some of the main shapes. Okay, and then I'm going to get the Payne's Grey and we're going to overlap 
the area that's already got colour so that it all blends and then we're just going to add this layer over the top And I'm going to apply the Payne's Grey all over where we've got this blue. Fairly long strokes as you're getting closer to the ear. That's where the hair starts getting longer. I can't believe that we've nearly finished this guy. I'm hoping that we will get him finished. Maybe the next one, but I'm just going to see how much of this black fur we can get. Because as you can probably tell, it's the black fur that's taking the longest time. So we've got that Payne's Grey and then I'm going to go back over with the um, Dark Indigo. I'm not going to press hard, I just want a nice lighter layer but it is a bit bluer in tone. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a glaze of this Dark Indigo. And then I'll go back over with the Payne's Grey again, just to add another layer before we go in with the black. And then the Payne's Grey again. I'm just going to sharpen the Payne's Grey, it's a bit blunt. Right, got the Payne's Grey sharpened. Right, sorry. So I'm just going to apply this Payne's Grey all across here. Applying a bit of a harder pressure now because we want to start building up this nice bluish tone. And I'm going to blend over these areas where we've already got colour applied so they all blend in together. And this is where we're going to really start to get the depth of this fur. see how it's really building up now and then when we go in with the black we'll really get that depth to the fur so i think i'm going to start um we'll do the spaniel next year in january um and then i think we're going to do a corgi as well because it's a tricolor so that'll be a lot of like blending different colours into each other. So the black into the brown, the brown and the black into white fur. Um, and it's shorter fur, so it shouldn't take as long as like this border collie has. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing the corgi actually. I think we should enjoy that one. I've not decided though for the corgi whether we're going to do a f like a the photo I've got is is of him laid down, so we could do like quite a lot of his body, um or we could just zoom in on his head. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't decided. It. Right, so that's the pain's grey. Um, I'm going to take 
the warm grey six and with the warm grey six I'm just going back over where some of these darker shadows are just to get some of the darker highlights coming through now might not need the black we will see so i'm just adding in some of these shadows and the shadows that you're adding in are like the clumps of fur so that's all that we're adding in is just little clumps of fur that we can see so it's the shadows that those clumps of fur are creating within the fur Blend this area out with the long grey six as well. Um, okay, I'm going to take my Payne's grey again. So, this isn't dark enough, you can see how light I've got my pressure. So, I'm just going to start increasing my pressure and I'm going to go over the areas with the long grey six, which I've just applied just to help blend this all together again and there you go you can see how much depth now we get into the fur now that I'm applying a bit harder it's actually looking a bit too blue for me um yeah it's looking a bit blue now <laughs> so I think I'm going to take my dark sepia let's see what it looks like with the dark sepia I'm not going to press too hard with the dark sepia, but um, this will just help tone down the blue in his coat. Um, if you're happy with him having a bit more of a bluish tone, feel free to just keep building up the layers of the Payne's Grey. Um, I don't want him to be too blue, so that's why I'm going in with the dark sepia, because it'll help tone that down. We're going to get this blend into the ear sorted after. But we're, yeah, we're starting to get his face. I'm really excited for this piece. I know I say it a lot, but I, I really am. I think we'll all have some amazing border polys. And you've all dealt with black and white fur. Yeah, I'm definitely liking the dark sepia over this Payne's Grey. I'm not pressing too hard, so I'm still getting that bluish tone of the Payne's Grey shining through. But I'm liking how it's just knocking back those blue tones ever so slightly. Um, like so. I'm then going to take the black, and what I'm going to do is with the black, well, we've got it in the ears. I'm just going to sort of bring the fur down from the ears and under. So I'm tapering those edges like a flicking kind of motion. And this is just going to give you that blend between the head and the ear. Um, and we are going to go over some of the head hair. I, know, I don't know how else to explain it. Your ear hair and your head hair. <laughs> um, to help blend. So like here, I'm going to bring this black very lightly. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want this to be jet black like we have in the ear, but I just want that darker fur. You see, we're just going to start blending and then I can bring it across the top of the head here. Just to help with the blend and the transition between the two areas. And then if you need to darken parts of the ear up, you can. And then I'm going to come down here again where we've got this ear. 
um, going under that head hair but then I'm going to bring this into the ear so I'm going to pull it up so when you're going under fur I move my pencil strokes under as if I'm drawing underneath the fur and then when I want the fur to be overlaying something I'm dragging the fur upwards um, I don't know if it makes a difference but in my head it does <laughs> so uh, it's how I how I do it with my work Pull that up there. Okay. And then this corner needs to be a bit darker. There's also a brown tone, so I'm going to get the walnut brown. So I've got the walnut brown just on the edge here near this ear. I can see a bit of brownish tone, maybe purple, but I'm going to stick to brown. So I'm just going to draw this in over the side of his head here. Um, and then I'm just going to take the one grey six and I'm just going to darken here again. Ever so slightly. Again, just knocking back those blue tones, not pressing too hard. And there we go, we're starting to get a head. Okay, um, I'm going to get my base layer again and we're just going to keep coming down this face with the... Um, fur. Now I'm just looking and I'm trying to work out what area would be best to work on. Um, I'm I'm thinking um, that we'll start down here and then come back up because we're working with black fur and we don't want it to smudge. I think it's going to be easier to um yeah we'll work down here and bring the black fur back up to the ear um that's gonna work best okay so um i'm gonna get my warm gray one and i'm gonna add this base layer um in this corner now i'm applying harder pressure but do be careful because obviously we've got the white fur here so if you're gonna struggle between knowing where the white fur is and the black fur um, use a warm grey two. So if I get my warm grey two, I'll show you the difference. So I've got my warm grey two. So here, obviously, I've got the warm grey one as the base layer. But if I come in with a warm grey two, can we see how much darker that base layer is? So if you're struggling, and you can use the warm grey two because it's a dark area. Um, I like using warm grey one, but um, if I do this with the warm grey two, you can just see how that fur is just slightly different to the white fur now and it should make it easy if you'll have a harder time differentiating um i'm just going to stick to actually i'm going to stick to the one grade two especially here because it is quite dark um and this will help you guys so this is the long grey two as a base layer. And I'm only just going to do this little section first, just so that we can get it done and um, we can just keep moving up with the black fur. So I'm going to come in with the um, dark indigo again. And again, following this fur direction. I was going to, um, as one of our tutorials, I was actually going to do a Siberian Husky, but the photos that I want to draw, they're, they're black. So I'm not quite sure we, we want to do another black dog anytime soon. <laughs> right, so I'm just following this fur direction with this blue. And we've got a lot of loose hairs, so we will be adding them in, but we'll probably add them in with a dark sepia. So I'm going to bring this down. You can see I'm just following the hair. So every time I'm drawing, I'm applying the pencil and then I'm looking back um, at the reference photo. Like so. And that's just going to come down a little bit here. Right, so this is the dark indigo. 
Um, now it is very dark here, but I'm going to add the Payne's Grey. I'm going to slowly build it up just because we are near the white fur. Um, and I find that if I'm a bit slower building up my layers, um, I, I just find it easier. Uh, I, I'm not rushing and you get more confidence when you've built it up slowly. So again, blend over where we've already got some dark pigment. This is the Payne's Grey. And we're just going to build this down. See. We're starting to build up. And don't worry if you're getting any, like, here you can see these fur lines. I'm not worried about any darker parts of pigment. It's just going to add to, like, a natural look of the fur. Right, so this is the Payne's Rain. I've pressed further hard. Um, and then I'm going to come in with the black. Again, I'm going to darken where I've got the pigment here. And then I'm going to drag the pigment down and blend these two areas. So it's always, I'm always going over these areas because I want it to look like we did this area at the same time. Even though we know we haven't, you want it to look smooth and you want it to look like we have. And then I'm going to bring that black down here. And then I'm going to just go over this Payne's Grey. And then we'll start adding some of those wispy hairs in. And then... And I am applying quite hard pressure here because it is very dark. I want it to be dark here. You can see how we've got where the black fur is and where the white fur is. So now we need to get them to blend together and look like they're part of the same dog. So I'm going to take, I'm just looking at the colours. I'm actually going to take the dark sepia. Um, and I'm just going to look at the reference photo. And what I'm going to do is very lightly add in these little wisps of fur. So it's coming off of the black and into the white. So I'm tapering these edges. And then there's just some little, little clusters of hair that's not quite dark, not as dark as the black. And I'm just going to add them in. Now, again, you don't need to be accurate here, um, especially for this piece. We're not drawing this for anybody. Um, and nobody's going to see the reference photo. But again, this is a dog. When this fur moves, these little wispy bits will have moved as well. As long as we've got the main shape of the markings, everything's fine. So I'm just coming, pulling the pigment down from the black and then into up and over the white fur. It's kind of the effect I'm going for. Very light, so I'm tapering these lines so it's harder in the black and then lighter at the end and I'm just bringing this black fur uh, dark sepia sorry down creating these lines you can see we're just starting to get this nice transition between the two and anywhere where I've got a bit of a harsher line I'm just going to bring that dark sepia back over the pigmented area and then out into the white um, I'm going to pick up this black. I'm not getting this this blend here is a bit too harsh. So I'm just going to take the black. I'm just going to use very light pressure with the black. And I'm just going to blend out some of this pigment with the black fur as well. And then I'll go back to the dark sepia. A little loose hair there. And then we can bring this down. 
So this is where we got the white fur in first so that the dark tones can layer nicely over the top. So I'm just going to bring this down like so. So we're starting to really get this nice blend between the uh, colours. So um, I'm going to keep going with the black fur at the bottom and then we'll bring it up here. Um, we're adding the dark fur kind of in here but we're not going all the way down to where this white fur is with the transition because we want the white fur in first. I'm going to leave a gap. So I kind of keep the line. So you can see here where we've got the fur drawn in. I'm going to sort of keep this black line coming across here because I want to add this black, the white fur in first and then do like we did here with the black fur doing that transition over. Um, so I'm going to get my warm grey one as my base layer again. Um, and I'm just going to take a look at this reference photo. So the, that fur's there. So this fur is coming down that way. And then add in the base layer. And then uh, the dark indigo, and again, blend over that pigment already there. It's coming down that way. And then it's straightening out here. So you can see the shape here. So it's curving and then it's straighter. And sometimes it's harder to do that with the base layer. So as long as you're pressing quite not too hard to remove all the two for the papery base layer, but enough that the base layer is down and smooth. If you still can't see the fur direction, use the dark indigo to help you, uh, which is what I do. Every layer, I can still add this fur direction in. Okay, so that's the dark indigo in. Then got the paint grey. Um, and I'm just going to bring, I feel like I need to bring this fur over this direction a bit more. So I'm going to do that with the paint grey, this corner. And then it sort of curves here. Um, so you can see, even though I've added in the fur, I just feel like it needed to come over a bit more. So that's what I'm doing with the paint grey. And this is why I've not pressed too hard. I can start changing this fur direction in these earlier layers. When you get to these kind of layers that we've already got higher up, it's changing that fur direction would be near on impossible. Um, and then I'm just going to add this paint grey. And then make sure that you've gone over where we've got that other pigment. Um, I'm going to apply another layer of this paint's grey, pressing a little bit harder this time, because not all of this fur is going to be black. We've got a bit of this blue tinge coming through. And when I say it's not going to be black, I mean black pigment. Um, obviously we are creating a black and white border collie and you can see that he is looking black even though we've got a lot of the blue tones in. Um, 
it's more the fact that we're not going to be using the black pigment across all of this piece of piece of fur. Okay, and then I'm going to get the black, and I'm going to bring this down where we've already got the black pigment, and I'm just going to blend this over into where we've just drawn so i know this is a lot of repetition now especially with it being the black fur but i hope you're understanding more my methods i guess of how i approach black fur and i hope it's helping okay i just want to bring this down here so we can see we're starting to get this nice blend And then this black comes down to about here, so like so. Just going over some areas where I feel like I just want to darken it up ever so slightly. Okay, and then I'm just gonna bring a little bit of this black here. And then, so I've pressed quite hard. Where I've applied this black, I've pressed quite hard. I'm now gonna sort of hold your pencil higher up, lighter pressure, and I'm just gonna add the black as a glaze over the top. Just want to darken this, but I don't want it to look as pigmented, I guess. I want that glaze of the black over the top. Um, I'm then going to get the um, cold, I want the cold grey 6. And then I'm going to use the cold grey 6 over the top where it's that bit lighter. And then pressing a little bit harder here, just to help get that pigment into the tooth of the paper. And then I'll take that black and just help with a blend again. Any areas where I just need to blend it back in, darken up. Like so. Okay, next section. So by now I'm guessing you know the drill, <laughs> one grey one. And I'm going to do it along this part of his face. I know it's been a long tutorial as well, so if you've stayed this long, I really appreciate it. The pieces do take a while and I didn't want to do a tutorial for YouTube and not do it the way that I wouldn't, like do it a different way. I wanted the tutorials to be true to how I work. So if that means that they're quite long, that means they're long. Um, I don't like skipping steps. I don't like to feel like my work's being rushed. Um, so yeah, if my tutorials are quite long and that's not for you, that's perfectly fine. Um, I want them to be very true to me and um, I want you to all to be able to learn and if it means I slow down I slow down I want you I want you guys to be able to follow along and feel like you can do something like this okay that's the um, I've gone about halfway down the ear again I'm doing small sections just to make it easier um, and then I've got the warm grey, uh, no I haven't got the warm grey anything <laughs> I have the dark indigo <laughs> my brain is elsewhere today I can tell you that right so I'm following this part of the cheek here um, and I know that this part is sort of going off here so I'm going to ignore this section for the moment and I'm going to focus here because this fur is going in a different direction and 
we want to make it a little easier by breaking it down we're making it easy for ourselves so it's coming up here and then it's going down the face so it's sort of curving and then down I think as well this tutorial is taking a bit longer than expected because I've drawn him quite large. Um, I've not actually measured how large I've drawn mine. I think he's slightly larger than A4. So he's taken a bit longer than expected. <laughs> right, uh, then the Payne's Grey. Again, I'm going to go over this area where we've got the Payne's Grey and the Blacks. I can't believe I've nearly finished. I always say this. I know I keep saying this, but I just can't believe it. I've I've just I've really enjoyed this piece. Really enjoyed it. So when I'm coming close to an ending on a piece, it is sad that you're not gonna have this face on the drawing board. <laughs> I'm just get that blend over. Right. It's the Payne's Grey there. Um, I am just going to add a bit more of this blue, dark indigo, along this bottom corner. It is a bit bluer. I don't want too much. I'm not pressing hard. Um, I'm then going to take the warm grey six along here. So I'm coming where we've got pigment. I'm adding this warm grey six and then I'm bringing it down where it's darker here, just before we go in with any black. Now black, remember when you're adding the black pigment, it's very smudgeable, so make sure you are resting your hand on something. Um, you might still get a few little smudges, we can clean that up with an eraser at the end, but um, that's the only issue with uh, the black pigment pencils. Okay, and then I'm going to get the black along this edge and then lightly glaze Just gonna get the Payne's Grey. I just want to soften these edges, so I'm just gonna take the Payne's Grey over the top of these black edges. Just want it to be a little softer. Okay. Right, and then we can just do the same process here: the dark indigo, the Payne's Grey, the black. Um, so dark indigo, and this is going straight down. So this is why I did that section first, because the fur was changing direction. And this section is fairly simple. It's going straight down like this. Also, for the tutorials, do you want to just stick to dogs? Because obviously I, I draw a lot of dogs within my work. Um, or would you like to do something like a donkey? Because I would like to draw a donkey at some point, And I'm not sure I have to film it. Or maybe I'll film parts. We'll see. Um, I've then got the Payne's Grey. Again, make sure you go over those areas. it right up to that ear and we will get this all blended in nicely now 
not pressing too hard you can see i'm not hard pressure at all with the difference in the color um, and i'm just going to run the paint spray over a couple of times Okay, then got the, I'm going to take the warm grey six along this edge here. So I'm coming up and down. So my pencil strokes are going downwards. And I'm just going to start blending over that ear as well. And then down here. So we're starting to get... As we come down this ear, this is where we're starting to get into some bleached fur. Um, some bleached fur. So we're going to start getting this warmer tone, which is why I'm starting to introduce this warm grey 6 here. Obviously using the Payne's grey and the dark indigo, um, they're quite cool colours. So I want a warmer tone to start coming through the fur. Um, and then got the cold grey 6, and I'm not going to go over where we've got the warm grey, but in this area. I'm going to take the cold grey six have, you will have to blend ever so slightly over the warm grey but don't blend over the whole section so just where they're meeting each other blend over there but don't blend across the whole section So that's the cold grey six. Um, I'm then going to get the black. Now the black is coming down here. Like so. I'm going to blend there. I'm then going to just blend this line outwards so I'm using lighter pressure when I want it to start blending into these lighter areas and then I'm gonna just start light pressure start going over the top here going over the areas but it's already got some pigment and it's just going to make it look like it was all drawn at once rather than section by section and then as we come down here I'm going over with the black from the ear into the up and under the head fur, my technical terms again, and then over this black very lightly. But it is going to be darker where you've got that warm grey, it is going to be darker. And then I'm just going to glaze over very lightly with the black here. Yeah, I'm really liking this fur. See how soft his fur is starting to look now as well. And now we can come back in and finish this section. So um, I have the dark indigo and we know that this fur is curving down. So you can just see it, just in these little, like three little sections that we've done, how much this fur is changing direction. And this is why it's really important that you really re study that reference photo and constantly refer back to it. If we'd have done this all in the same direction, we wouldn't end up with a realistic look at the end. It's really important that we follow this fur direction. So this is the dark indigo. Um, and then I'm going to get the Payne's Grey. Just again blending over the top of this section and bringing that Payne's Grey down.
So this is the Payne's grain. I'm running over it a couple of times again. Um, I'm going to get the one grey six and I'm going to run this across this corner here. Blending again over the top of everything. Um, and then paint's grey and I'm going to go over and just blend over the top. Just again, just to add more layers and more of this blue. And then we'll get the black. And it's coming round here. And I'm going to blend this down. Oops. I'm not pressing too hard with this black. And I'm going to just blend upwards here because that's quite a harsh line don't want a harsh line there and then blend that downwards just starting to smooth out any of these harsher lines that i'm getting just by blending either way that's coming down here and a bit of a darker glaze with the black there and then very lightly so again holding towards the end of the pencil glaze over the top of this black okay right let me move this piece across a little bit so you can see what we're doing next okay so we're going to try and get as much of this black fur done obviously we've got the transition between the black and the white which we are going to miss where we don't have this white fur we're going to leave like a line uh, just how we do the sections and then in the next part we can do the white fur and get this transition and then the final details so we are so close guys so close <laughs> um so let's get our warm gray one again and let's get a base layer down so i'm going to start from uh, down here and work our way up um, like I say, we're not going to get this transition to fur in, so I'm not going to bring my black, uh, my base layer all the way down. So I'm going to sort of keep it to where we got that first marking. Um, and I'm just going to add in this one grey one base layer. This might be another longer tutorial, but I do want to get this black fur done. Um this time round so I know the last couple especially that year that year took a while um, and this one's gonna be probably a similar length tutorial so I know they're quite long but feel free obviously we've been on YouTube you can pause and come back as and when you need to um, but I'm gonna I'll try and do shorter length ones like an hour I think an hour is a good length it's hard when you want to finish something <laughs> right um so we have the base layer down and then back to dark indigo i just had a thought then that i hadn't pressed record but i have <laughs> it's one of those mornings for me today i think one of those mornings Disaster that would be if I'd have filmed a whole section. Forgot to hit record. I'm saying I had to hit record because I've just gone and made myself a cup of tea because it's quite chilly this morning. So I've had to make a cup of tea, keep warm. <laughs> Got my blanket on. Always have a blanket over my legs. Haven't resorted to putting the heating on yet, but we're getting close. <laughs> right, that's the uh, dark indigo. I've then got the paint's grey, and we're gonna just go in like we have been paint's grey. And I'm gonna do a couple of layers of the paint's grey again just to build up 
the colour and the amount of layers on the paper. nearly finished my Christmas commission so I might be able to film a bit more for YouTube um, I have an ear study I'd like to do so like some focus studies I think is what I'm going to try and get filmed um, I think it's good every now and then if you do do little like focus studies so especially if there's an area you're struggling with so like if you struggle with dog noses I think for doing a little focus on a dog's nose just the dog's nose, nothing else, maybe a bit of the fur around it, but doing those focus studies really, they take out the whole picture and um, it helps you study those areas that you struggle with. So I think we're going to do a few studies. And it's always good, even for me, to do a study because I don't want to get complacent. Right, get in there. So this is the first layer of the Payne's Grey. Probably go over it once more with the Payne's Grey. And you can see I'm using fairly long pencil strokes. The fur's quite long here. And I'm not pressing hard because I want to try and keep this like soft looking texture to the fur. I also want the fur to look quite full. There's a lot of fur on this guy. So you want his fur to look quite full. Okay, so that's one layer of the Payne's Grey. Go back in over the top, same same way that you've been doing it, and more. So yeah, I've got a little ear study to do, um, and a paw study, dog paw. Um, and I think we will do an eye study, because I, I do enjoy drawing eyes. Eyes are fun to draw. Um, and then people have mentioned Patreon to me, so I don't know if you guys have ever signed up to a Patreon. Um, but it's something I may look look into towards the next half of next year. So you get tutorials like this, but um, you pay a monthly fee. Um, which obviously is better for me, because it does take time for me to do these tutorials. Um, but I thought I'd start off by doing some free tutorials because it gives you guys an idea of how I teach, whether I'm a good teacher or not, <laughs> whether you like the methods that I use or not, um, rather than you paying money and then thinking, oh God, this is a waste of time. Um, so yeah, it's may maybe something that I'm going to look into. I'll still do stuff on YouTube because I understand that everybody can pay. But I think on YouTube it will be more focused and time-lapsed um, if I do so for Patreon. Okay, that's the Payne's Grey. I'm then going to bring in the Warm Grey 6. And I'm going to apply this Warm Grey 6 um, across all of this part. Very lightly, I'm not going to press too hard. Um, but we're going to start warming up some of this fur. It's all about, when I'm using the mixture of the warm and cool tones, it's kind of knocking back some of the cooler bits, giving them more of a neutral shade. Um, just where I want it. Again, if you want your fur to be more of a blue tone, use the cold grey 6 instead of where I've been using the warm grey. It all depends on what you want your dog to look like as well. I, I know I'm doing a tutorial, but... You can make that this piece your own. And that, that's something that I kind of want to encourage. I want you guys to be feel free to follow along. But add, add the colours that you see. Don't add the colours you don't see. Um, make it your own piece. I want you to have that courage as well. I'll build up to having that courage. <laughs> so I'm applying this warm grey 6 across all of this Payne's grey. I'm going to add the dark sepia as well. It's quite a dark area, but I don't quite want the black yet. So I'm going to get the um, dark sepia. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start mapping in these shapes with this dark sepia. So we've got 
this darker hairline here. I can feel that my paper is getting nice and buttery so I can start adding in these details. So when I say the paper is getting nice and buttery I'm getting a nice amount of layers on the paper. So the, paper, the pencil pigment is just gliding on top of all these other layers that we've got going on. Um, we've got one coming down here. So I've just added in some shapes that I can see. Again, where these clumps of fur are. Um, I'm going to go back in with the Payne's Grey where I've marked in these shapes. And I'm just going to blend out. Applying a bit more pressure now. And then I'm going to get the black. I'm going to blend all of this in nicely now. So I'm going to take where it's dark along here and blend outwards. So when I'm blending the black into the fur, we're tapering those edges. So we're coming in harder where we've got this really dark area. And then tapering those edges to so lift that pencil off the paper. Get those soft edges and make it blend really nicely into each other. And then if you want any other areas to be darker, just use that light pressure and just glaze over the top. And you'll get that nice darker glaze of the black without it being too dark. Just starting to get a nice dark pigment here, um, and then this area down here is quite dark, so I'm just gonna darken down here in this section, and then just glaze where it's lighter. Now, if you're not getting as many layers, it can be down to your paper, or you've pressed too hard. Um, this the reason I use the Fabriano is it takes a lot of layers, so I can add lots and lots of layers. Um, if you're not using the Fabriano, it could just be the paper you're using, so just adjust the method to the paper that you're using. Okay, right. Um, we will come back to this section and sort this out um, after we want to get a bit more of this paper covered. Um, and by sort this out, I mean we need to blend a few more of these sections together. But I want to start adding in the rest of the fur. Um, we can titivate and fiddle about with areas uh, later on. So I'm just going to come in again. Um, let me just have a look actually. Where do we need to be with this piece? We're going to follow this fur line here. So I'm going to bring this pencil, this base layer, down here. So we're going to do this section of fur. That's going to come down. Like so. I'm loving how bright white those whiskers are. That white pencil really did well. <laughs> okay, let's take this paint spray. This isn't Payne's Grey, this is Warm Grey One. Uh, my brain's not working today. <laughs> okay, Warm Grey One. Base layer down. And then, usual process, we're going to do the Dark Indigo and uh, followed by the Payne's Grey.
so that's the dark indigo i think i'm actually going to just do another pass over this dark indigo it's starting to get quite blue down here so i'm just gonna very lightly i'm not gonna do much just gonna very lightly okay and then Payne's gray as usual <laughs> over where we've got some pigment already help blend this all out so i would like to i'm hoping this won't take too much longer for this black fur but we're already an hour in <laughs> Not going to rush though. If I need to do some more black fur in the next section, we will. Um, would have been nice to get all this black fur done. Just takes time. You can see just by building up the layers, it just takes time to get that depth of colour that we want. Doing it by section by section probably takes time. Like we could have filled in the whole whole area, base layer. But I think if if you're not used to doing it, like filling in the whole section, it can get really overwhelming and confusing. So by, I think by simplifying it into section by section, it's going to be easier for you guys. And you can see we've not brought this black fur all the way down. Um, we're going to do that section once we've got the white fur in. So we still have white, uh, some black fur that we do need to um, add. I want that white fur in first so that we can do like here and blend it all in nicely. Okay, that's the um, Payne's Grey in. I'm just gonna blend here a bit. Um, so I'm just adding where I feel like I need to just blend over the paint grey a bit more. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take the Cold Grey 6 and I'm going to bring Cold Grey 6 over the top of um, this paint grey. May do um, another section on this black fur. I don't... I'm trying to work out if this is going to be too long a tutorial for you guys. Um, whether I break it down into like another section of black fur and then the white fur and final details. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure what to do. I don't want it to be too long. I don't want you guys to yeah, have too much to do in per part. Um, okay, and then I'm going to take the dark sepia, and we've got quite a lot of the fur to section out here. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just looking, and I'm going to map in some of these shapes. Again, it doesn't matter if they're not in the right place; the fur moves all the time, um, so it's fine. I'm not too worried about getting them in the correct place, the right section. I just want this fur to look like there's movement in it and like there's depth because they have nice thick coats and that's the look that we're going for we're trying to get that look of the fur the texture of the fur so that's um, what I'm aiming for with this piece I'm just going to bring that down here and then there's a darker section here as well so I've done all this with the um, dark sepia. Darker section there as well. Okay, and then I'm going to go back over all of that again with the Payne's Grey. So it is quite a bluish area. 
Um, this might look too blue for me, so I may go in with a warm grey 6, but we'll have a look once I've gone over. I'm running this um, Payne's Grey over the top of that dark sepia. Okay, and then I'm going to get my black. And I'm not going to press hard, I'm just lightly, any areas that need to be a bit darker where that dark sepia is and then I'm just going to glaze over so light pressure and I'm just going to glaze that dark black over some of this area and just help with that blending and then where I want it to be quite dark still but not as dark as a pure black just going to glaze over the top with this black you can see that so really and this is getting a nice shine to the coat as well we've got a nice healthy coat looking look coming through as well as this nice coat Um, just gonna have a look. Let me have a look at this. Okay, I've actually um, I've just picked up the cold grey five, and I'm just gonna run the cold grey five over the top of um this section. In the lighter areas, um, medium pressure, and I'm just gonna use this to help with a bit more blending. So it's not quite as dark as the um cold grey six. I don't want it to be that dark. Um, I don't want it to be Payne's Grey, so I'm just going to use the Cold Grey 5. Um, yeah, this is working nicely now. Over the top, and this is just going to help smooth again and just do a bit more of this blending for me. Um, and then I think I am going to leave this here for this tutorial, guys. Um, we've done a lot. We've got the head in and we've got this part of the fur in. So we'll do the next section of black fur. Um... And then we'll do the white fur. Um, I'm just conscious that it's taken a while, obviously, with this black fur. And I don't want to be spending two hours on one section at once for you guys. Um, I, I, I do like the fact that you can take breaks and come back to it. And yeah, um, well, that's if you're following along as I'm uploading them. Um, we have quite a section to do and it gets a bit complicated we've got a lot of brown brown tones to come in um so i think we'll we'll leave it here um i will zoom you out so that you can see the whole piece as a whole but we are getting very close um we're not far away from being finished um i reckon another couple of sessions for definite this time i know i keep saying that <laughs> Um, but we are we are very very close now, so I will show you how we're looking. So it's cut off a bit of the white fur, um, but you can see how close we are to being done now. We're we're really close. We just have this section of fur to do. Um, so yeah, I hope that you're enjoying this tutorial. I know it is a long one. I'm sorry it's a long one, but it will be worth it in the end. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. It helps my channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next part. Bye, everybody.